Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamer tag is iRyanI, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, and then you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Ryan and welcome back to another installment of Modded Monday, the series where I choose five mods every week for you guys to check out and perhaps add them to your load order if you find them interesting. Yeah, take that Sean Patrick. All jokes aside though, welcome to week number 185 of our top five mods of the week series. But before we jump into the mods, I wanna remind you guys that I recently partnered with Gamersups, which is the best energy drink on the market in my opinion. Now I myself used to drink unhealthy gas station energy drinks, but switched whenever I heard about Gamersups being the healthier choice and alternative. Since then I've been drinking it regularly, so I reached out and got in contact with them so that we can show you guys the drink and you can try it free if you'd like. If you use my link and the code found in the description, which is RTD, you can get a 10% discount on all their drinks. And if you do end up trying it, definitely let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Now it's time to jump into this week's mods, and starting us off we have the Skyrim Horse Renewal Animation Mod. Now what this mod does is it changes the horse and horse riders animation, whether it be their idle, walk, trot, run, and sprint animations, to be a lot more realistic and feel more fluid in Skyrim. You know, the horses in the original game of Skyrim feel kind of clunky, especially when you're riding around and even trying to scale up mountains. You know, they can just feel clunky at times and overall glitchy, but there's tons of mods out there that completely overhaul the horses, and I feel as though this is the cherry on top for those types of mods. You know, you have mods like Convenient Horses, which completely overhauls all of the horse mechanics in the game and makes it a lot better. And then you have other things that change the meshes of the horses, such as the Oblivion Horses 2K mod, which I think is amazing. All of the horses look really good with that mod. And topping it off with an animation mod, that being the Skyrim Horse Renewal animation mod, I feel as though you'll have the most realistic and best looking horses in Skyrim. Now even if you just download this mod standalone and you ignore the ones that I recommended, I do feel as though this is a perfect addition to the game because there's so many different animations when you're off horses and then you get on a horse and it just seems like your guy is static. So it doesn't really seem like they took too much time in doing the horse animations, so this mod changes that so that there's a lot more thought put into each animation while you're on your horse. All in all, it's a very simple mod, so if you're someone who uses horses a lot or you want to start out by using the mods that I recommended, then I definitely recommend the Skyrim Horse Renewal animation to be on top of that load order, and that's definitely why it comes in at our number 5 spot, so I strongly recommend downloading the Skyrim Horse Renewal animation mod. Coming in at our number 4 spot, we have a perfect player home for those that like to keep their houses small. This is the Wraith Small Forest Home. Where to find this is up the hill alongside the roadside ruins, and it also has an unlocked marker for immediate fast travel. It offers small, comfy interior spaces for one adventurer, alchemy and enchanting systems, a cooking pot, anvil, tanning rack, smelting pot, grindstone, and armor workbench, all into one very, very tiny house. Now, I'm a huge fan of small house mods because I like to see where each mod creator allocates each different decoration and where they fit the different types of crafting stations, and just being able to fit everything in such a small area, which is really important in house mods because in my personal opinion, I hate going through door after door after door whenever I'm just trying to go to my armor station, I like it all to be within one loading screen. And that's exactly what Wraith's small forest home does, is it just makes it so everything is inside one small area so you don't have to keep going from load screen to load screen. I do understand that this forest home may not be for a lot of players because of just simply how small it is could be a bad thing because there's not really much room to do anything else other than your basic crafting needs. So I would say this is a forest home for someone who just started out the game and needs all the crafting stations, but not someone who is in later game status and has a ton of stuff to put on display and loot. So if you've started up a new adventure character and you like to be in the woods a lot, and maybe you're an archer and you like to go hunting a lot, then the Wraith Small Forest Home is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out. And that's why it comes in at our number four spot, so I'd recommend downloading it and giving it a try for yourself. Coming in at our number 3 spot, we have Northfire's Windhelm 2K mod. Now there's also a 1K version if you don't want to spend 500 megabytes on this mod, but if you do spend a lot of time in Windhelm, then this is the perfect texture replacer for you. It's a texture replacer for the city of Windhelm, focusing on making it look like an ancient but lived-in city. Now the mod page reads that there's dirty stone walls with broken parts, really muddy streets because in a capital city the snow never has a chance to settle, realistic wood textures on houses, indoor walls and floors, there's removed roots from the cemetery alley, new windows, stone and bronze sculptures, and masonry with painted Norse ornaments. 
also a new Wall of the Dead, headstones, and more. Now, on the original game of Skyrim, the vanilla textures had an upscaled, hand-painted feel to them, and this makes it totally different. The textures used in this mod are based on real photographic texture resources spanning from 2K to 4K, and the goal was to make the low-res meshes of Windhelm look as realistic as possible. Now they also didn't include the front gate overhaul because there's plenty of different mods that change the gate of Windhelm, so they'd recommend you check out those mods instead, but I feel as though this is a perfect overhaul to Windhelm and it changes every single aspect about it, but it is rather large, coming in at 580.01 megabytes, so I really would only recommend this to Nords or people who like to spend a lot of time in Windhelm, maybe it's your favorite city. All in all, this would be a great addition to a load order focusing on graphical overhauls, so if graphics are something that you're really concerned about, then nothing gets better than Northfire's Windhelm 2K mod. The amount of time and effort that went into creating all these textures is just phenomenal and they all look beautiful, and that's definitely why it comes in at our number 3 spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading Northfire's Windhelm 2K mod. Coming in at our number 2 spot, we have a new quest slash dungeon mod called the Warrior of Rivercrest. Now the mod page reads, head to the settlement of Sevil, near Falkreath, where you will hear about the Warrior of Rivercrest, who passed by and stayed in a village for a little while. Intrigued by who this unknown hero might be, you'll head to the Abyss, which is various dungeons filled with enemies, and you'll be able to help the warrior on his quest to defeat a lich. This mod contains only one quest, but it might be a long quest if you aren't overpowered or you don't have 10 followers with you, and in itself, the quest isn't that hard. You have to go through a total of 10 arenas accompanied by the warrior, and be sure to claim your rewards in the coffins before leaving the abyss, as you will not be able to return afterwards. So basically what they're saying is you go through 10 arenas in a row, making sure that each and every single one after another is a lot more difficult and actually challenges you. So once you get all the way to the end, you get a bunch of chests that you can loot. And there really isn't that much else to say about this mod. If you really like quest mods and you want to dive into a new dungeon and face some new enemies that'll really challenge you, and as well get a new companion, the warrior, and help him succeed in his battles, then the Warrior of Rivercrest is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out. So go download it and let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Coming in at our number one spot, we have one of the best player home mods that I've reviewed in a very long time, the Frostbire Tower mod. The mod page reads that you can journey on a quest to explore the mysterious tower that suddenly appeared in the Sea of Ghosts in Skyrim's far northeast. You can meet new characters, discover new powerful spells, and claim Frostbire Tower as your own in this new mystical experience. Upon completing the small quest in order to restore the tower, Frostbire will become a full-fledged player home complete with an alchemy garden, training rooms, blacksmiths, library, kitchen, bathhouse, and master bedroom. Now the main features in this house mod is the Altar of Spellcraft, where you can create over 100 spell tomes by yourself and over 40 new spells that aren't in the original game of Skyrim. There's a portal hub with portals to every major settlement in Skyrim, training facilities where skills can be increased with unique training dummies and dynamic shields, an altar of scroll craft where the most useful scrolls in Skyrim can be crafted, Frostbire Thralls who can be sent out on assignments such as collecting alchemical ingredients, mining rare ore, and more, and usable bathhouse facilities that will give temporary buffs after being used. Now one of my favorite features of this mod itself is the Frostbire Thralls that I just said there. Basically what you can do is you have a bunch of people around you that'll just work for you, and you can just walk up and ask them to go out and collect alchemical ingredients, or you can go and ask them to raid a bandit camp, and it has a little thing in parentheses that says how long it'll take, whether it be 20, 30 minutes, or more, which I feel as though is breaking the grounds for mods in Skyrim completely, because what if a mod came out that was sort of like that, where you have Frostbire Thralls, but maybe it's your own guild? You know, maybe you create your own thieves guild and you send people out to go steal things. I feel as though being the owner of a guild is now very possible with what this mod has done in Skyrim here. So with there being so many useful features inside of this player home mod, you gotta take a step back and actually look how good is the player home mod. Well, it's very, very beautiful. I love the inside of it, and I know it's kind of big, it's a big house mod, but it's great because all the doors automatically open for you, there isn't that many loading screens, there's so many areas that you can travel within the house as well, whether it be the portal hub where you can go to each and every city in the game, or you know, travel up to your bedroom and have a nice nap there, or maybe go and craft some spells in a different area. There isn't really that many loading screens, and there's no wasted space at all in this house mod either, so it just has everything that a house mod could possibly have. And I feel as though 
anyone that was a fan of the Oblivion Frog's Crag DLC that included a tower, you will definitely resonate with this mod because it's pretty much exactly the same and upgraded tenfold. I always speak so highly about house mods because they're one of my favorite aspects in Skyrim, how you can create your own house and actually put it on the market for other people to download. I just think that's a perfect thing to do. And seeing creations like Frostbire Tower just keep me coming back to Skyrim. And that's definitely why this mod comes in at our number one spot. So I'd strongly recommend downloading the Frostbire Tower Player Home mod. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the top five Skyrim mods of the week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new. It really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future top five mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and I will talk to you guys later.